One of the biggest mysteries in cosmology today is of course the so-called Hubble tension. The unusual discrepancy when it comes to the expansion of the universe. For some reason, all of the modern observations come up with two separate values for how fast the universe is expanding. The calculations based on the data from the oldest light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background that you see behind me, versus the calculations from some of the closest objects and closest galaxies to us, end up in two completely different values, suggesting that the universe expanded at different velocities or at different accelerations back in the days. And that, of course, doesn't really have a good explanation today and is known as the Hubble tension. But to try to solve this mystery, or I guess to try to resolve this tension, in the last few years there have been quite a lot of different propositions. And one of the biggest propositions was actually in regards to where our galaxy is located. As in the location of the Milky Way compared to other galaxies and everything else in the universe. Because maybe all of this tension is just some kind of a visual illusion based on our position in the universe and based on how other galaxies move across the night skies compared to us. In other words, maybe there is no tension and no mystery, maybe it's just a matter of perspective and a matter of physical motion, with the most popular explanation involving what's known as the local void. Unusual regions across the universe that contain a lot less density and a lot less stuff compared to other regions such as, for example, galactic clusters and the cosmic web. Would the voids themselves be the result of a galactic concentration and clustering effect that essentially creates these unusual formations that you see right here, creates the cosmic web, creates the galactic chunks and galactic clusters, but also creates these empty spaces in between. Something that's believed to be everywhere in the universe, and something that's forming a lot of motion across the universe, with various objects moving at different velocities. And it actually just so happens that the Milky Way galaxy is located right at the edge of one of these voids and is drifting inside of it. The void known as the local void. The formation that basically resembles something like this. A kind of an empty bubble, approximately 150 million light years across, possibly even larger, that was originally discovered back in the late 80s by two famous astronomers, Brent Tully and Richard Fisher. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video, I wanted to discuss a little bit more about the local void, if it's actually responsible for some of these effects, such as the Hubble tension, and what's inside of it as far as we know. And that's mostly because there's usually a lot of misconceptions about what exactly this represents and what effects this might cause on various galaxies nearby. But let's start with, I guess, the conclusion to that original question. Does it actually solve the Hubble tension? Well, at least one recent study that you can find in the description below proposes that if we consider a much larger void, what's known as the local hole, or essentially a much larger type of under density that includes a large chunk of the north part, the south part, and basically represents a bubble that's about 2 billion light years across, and if we also rewrite some of the gravitational formula just a little bit, it suddenly maybe makes sense. It could explain some things, but the problem is that you have to change quite a lot and you have to start questioning ideas behind Einsteinian relativity. Naturally, not everyone agrees with these explanations and not everyone wants to accept that as a fact. More intriguingly, another study very recently pretty much established maybe the opposite. As a result of all of this motion inside the local void, we might be underestimating the Hubble tension and in reality it might be much worse. So basically, at the moment, nobody knows. There is no clear answer, just a lot of suggestions. Hubble tension is still a mystery, local void is probably not the answer. But it's still worth exploring the local void and what's inside of it. I mean, I'm trying to kind of give you a visual representation of what it might look like here, but it's difficult to see it just because there are so many galaxies out there and a lot of them are basically surrounding the void, making it somewhat difficult to visualize what all of this looks like. But this image from Brent Tully, I think, does a pretty good job. So basically you have the Milky Way on one of the edges, you have the Great Attractor, you have the Coma Cluster, the Perseus Pisces Cluster, and of course the famous Great Attractor. But right in the middle, there's this unusual empty space. But it's not really empty. And that's actually the important part. It's an under density, not a void. So calling them voids is maybe a little bit misleading because there is still some stuff here, possibly a lot of stuff, it just a lot of it is difficult to see and as a result is very difficult to study. And even though from a distance it might appear empty, there is a lot of gas here and there is even possibly dark matter. At least one of the recent studies discovers that some of the smaller voids potentially contain a lot of it 
It's just we can't really see it very well. But there are things that we can see, and quite a lot of things scientists have studied very thoroughly. And a lot of these studies began with this. This was the first dwarf galaxy, isolated dwarf galaxy, discovered inside the void. ESO 461-36. This galaxy essentially allowed the scientists to establish the overall size of the void and discover how fast things are moving in it, both inside of it and on the edges. This galaxy is completely isolated, and it's moving away from us at 350 km per second. And because there's pretty much nothing between this galaxy and the Milky Way for millions and millions of light years, it allowed the researchers to calculate the size of the void. It's most likely approximately 150 million light years across, with this galaxy being almost in the middle. But due to the nature of the voids, over time they grow in size. Or basically, the empty space expands, and because of gravity, a lot of galaxies cluster and clump closer together, forming even thicker galactic clusters. And so, as a result, many galaxies right on the edge of the void are basically being pushed away from this region faster and faster. For example, the Milky Way galaxy is located inside this relatively flat formation known as the Local Sheet. It contains the galaxies you see right here, and for the most part it's relatively flat. And surprisingly, it serves as almost like a surface for this local void, with the Milky Way galaxy being one of these galaxies, right on the edge of the void, and basically being pushed away from everything inside of it. With recent calculations, calculating the expansion of velocity here at 260 km per second, from the center of the void. So basically all of the local sheet galaxies, including the Milky Way, are moving away from the local void at 260 km per second, the result of its expansion. But as of today, at least five more galaxies are known inside of the void, with all five discovered a long time ago. Actually, some of them were discovered back in the 19th century, and that's because they really stand out since there's really nothing around them. It's literally like having a tiny, tiny piece of light in the middle of dark space. For example, this galaxy, four million light years away from us, and it's a dwarf galaxy. But despite its relatively small size, it's definitely easily visible. And in a relatively similar region, there's also Pisces B. This one is a bit farther away at 30 million light years, but both are surprisingly blue galaxies, meaning that they're actively producing stars. Something definitely started star production here not so long ago, with the production starting approximately 100 million years ago. And though at first it wasn't actually clear what's happening here and why they're suddenly producing stars, later studies established that it's probably because they're slowly moving out of the void into the local filament, where they're now encountering huge amounts of gas that suddenly force these galaxies to start forming stars. Which is kind of cool, basically these galaxies were very likely dormant for billions of years and suddenly start to produce new stars from all of this pristine gas, potentially forming completely brand new systems with many stars resembling something that existed billions of years ago. But I guess what happens to these galaxies later on is still unclear. We also have a much larger galaxy here known as NGC 7077, a lenticular blue compact dwarf galaxy that's approximately 56 million light years away. Not much is known about this galaxy, but as you can see, it's also relatively easily visible and is also producing a lot of stars because of its blue color. Then we have this very beautiful irregular galaxy known as NGC 6789, and this is the closest blue compact dwarf galaxy that contains a very dense region of stars, but once again also a lot of baby stars and a lot of star formation. So you can kind of see that there's a pattern here, a lot of the galaxies inside the void seem to be actively forming stars, which does suggest that there is a lot of gas inside. It's not an empty void that doesn't have anything. There's a lot of stuff hiding there, we just can't see it. And last but not least is this gorgeous galaxy. The beautiful NGC 6503, a dwarf spiral galaxy, 17 million light years away from us, located at the edge of the void. This one is actually a little bit smaller than the Milky Way, it's about 30,000 light years across, but it's absolutely gorgeous with lots of starburst regions and huge amounts of star formation. But what makes this galaxy so unusual and so different is of course its perfect disk shape. But its true origins are unknown. It's unclear if it formed inside the void and is now moving into some kind of a local region, for example the local sheet, or if it formed with other galaxies and is now escaping into the void. Either way, it's technically inside the void now, and it's probably one of the most beautiful galaxies that you can capture even with a commercial telescope. But because all of these galaxies seem to form stars and must have started this relatively recently in cosmic terms, it suggests that there is a lot of gas in these regions, in these voids, that's ready to form stars 
as soon as something passes through the region and forms local densities. Which is precisely why this galaxy has so many starburst regions inside of it. And so in that sense, local voids are more like untouched regions of space where nothing formed before that do contain quite a lot of stuff, just maybe not as much stuff as a lot of galactic clusters. And though they are responsible for making things move in certain directions and in certain ways, and also give local galaxies a relatively large velocity away from the center of the void, as far as voids go, that's kind of all we know. We don't really know what's going on here yet, and we'll take a lot of additional studies and additional telescopes using other frequencies to try to figure this out. And intriguingly, one of the recent studies that tried to study voids by using cosmic microwave background, and specifically by focusing on certain regions inside the CMB that seem to be a little bit colder compared to everything else, discovered that certain propositions about the CMB might have been not entirely correct. For example, this region, known as the cold spot, was believed to be produced by one of the larger voids in that particular direction. But by observing this region in more detail, it was discovered that these effects could not be produced by just the void. There's definitely something else going on there, which means that we have a new mystery. So what exactly is the cold spot? You can learn a little bit more about the cold spot in one of the videos in the description, but we're definitely going to be coming back and talking more about this, trying to resolve this mystery as well. Here it was even proposed to be maybe a sign of interaction with some kind of a parallel universe. And so yeah, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.